Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, viewers. This is another day, and I have the great privilege to welcome you to the devotion of today, being Friday, November 3rd, 2023. We will be using the instrument of daily fountain, the daily devotional material of the Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion. Our topic today says, you must be a true Christian leader. And our text is taken from 1 Timothy chapter 3, 1 to 16. Let us pray. Lord, your word is profitable to the lives of men. And so we have come under the threshold of sin today. Reveal your word to us. Grant us understanding therein. Cause us, O oh Lord, to put it into practice to the glory of your name. As this is a new day, O oh God, may we live unto your glory by the nudging of your word. And may your blessings be upon our lives. Thank you, Lord, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy or filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. One that ruleth well his own house, having the children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not giving to too much wine, not greedy or filthy lucre, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. And let these also first be proved, then let them use the office of a deacon being found blameless. Even so must their wives be grave, not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their own children, and their own house is well. For they that have used the office of a deacon well purchase to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. These things I write unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of truth, and without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A leader is anyone in position of influence or authority. Whoever has the privilege of bearing responsibility for at least another 
is a leader. As soon as Jesus began his ministry on earth, he called some people to walk with him, to be with him. He incubated upon them. He made great leaders out of them and handed over the leadership of the church to them and ascended into heaven. With this, I believe that Jesus, even Jesus himself knew that no movement would do better than its leadership. No organization would do better than its leadership. In fact, organizations rise or either fall on leadership. And so Jesus didn't joke with this. Almost at the inception, he picked them. He worked on them and he made them leaders of the church, handed over the commission to them and ascended into heaven. And so for St. Paul, he knew that the work that God had used him to, to do in the life of the Gentiles will not be sustained if Credible leaders, good leaders, are not allowed to be the ones in charge. He started by saying that if any man desires the office of a bishop, he desires a good thing. You know, as priests, you know, in a lighter mood we are told that every priest has his mitre in his pocket. Wonderful. St. Paul is saying there's nothing wrong with it. You can desire to be a bishop. You can desire to be a leader in God's church. But whosoever that must lead God's people, there are things that are expected of him. And these are the qualifications that he took time to marshal for his son, Timothy. So that Timothy himself, and other ones that are working with him, whether in the position of elders, whether in the position of deacons and all that, will be able to live in the way of God as God wants it. Number one that he pointed out is the fact that that such a one must be blameless. Blameless in this sense literally means not able to be held in a criminal sense not able to be held in a criminal sense. That is, no valid accusation of wrongdoing can be brought against such a person, justifiably. So for a leader, he must be above reproach so that the church will not be disgraced. And number two is that he must be a husband of one wife. This one is not in any way excluding unmarried people from leading the church. After all, St. Paul was not married, but he was a great leader. But this one has to do with the leader's moral and sexual purity. One totally devoted to his wife, maintaining singular devotion, affection, and sexual purity in both thought and deed. That's exactly what St. Paul is saying here. And not one who is jumping from one woman to the other, from one woman to the other. No! St. Paul is saying this one is not the leader that he's talking about. And to violate this is to forfeit blamelessness and no longer above reproach. He must be a sober personality. Sobriety in this sense is metaphorically used to mean alert, to mean watchful, and to mean clear-headed. What is required of a person that has to be a leader in God's church? He must be a vigilant man. A vigilant man is a man that is disciplined. 
A vigilant man is a man that knows how to order his priorities. A vigilant man is a man that is serious about spiritual matters. And that's why the Bible says, be sober, be vigilant, because your enemy moves around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Meaning, if these qualities are lacking in a leader, he is likely to be subjected to the, to the capture of the devil and the church will be disgraced. And he must be of good behavior. He must not be someone that leads chaotic life. In fact, any Christian leader that cannot order his own life cannot order the church. As a Christian leader, eyes are on you. Whether you like it or not, you are making disciples towards your own lifestyle. And St. Paul is saying here, such a person must be of good behavior. Because if such a person is not of good behavior, his chaotic life will affect the church. And it must be somebody that is given to hospitality. The church is like a hospital where the sick is nurtured to standing on their feet again. And so, such a person must have love for strangers. Such a person must be open to accommodate and help others grow in faith. He must be able to help. He must be someone who has the heart to help when he can help, when he has the resources to help, whether physical, material, or spiritual resources. Such a person must be apt to teach, able to teach, and ready to teach, able to teach, and ready to teach. The bane of what we call denominations in our time is that a Christian leader mounts the podium cannot explain what the Bible is saying in a particular verse. That's an aberration. Such a person must be, re must be able to teach and be ready to teach God's word, the sound doctrine, the sound word of God without corruption. And such a person must not be given to wine. This one is, is very, very important. If you look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, St. Paul says, Do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I began to ask myself, why was he making something that looks like a comparison be, 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 you know, between the two? And I can tell you why. Two of them, when they come upon a man, they make the man behave outside of himself. For example, when the Spirit of God came upon Saul, who was to become the king of Israel, he joined the prophets. He prophesied that even people around were saying, Ah, is Saul now among the prophets? When Noah, when Noah saw wine and drank it and got to a point of drunkenness, eh? He became naked. The only thing that came out of his mouth was curse against one of his sons. So a Christian leader must be one who is not beclouded by the spirit of wine. He must be someone with a sound-minded judgment, not beclouded by alcohol. And this is more than a mere prohibition against drunkenness. But a Christian leader must not have a reputation as a drinker. And that's exactly what St. Paul is saying here. And such a person must not be a striker. Somebody who is physically violent. Any small thing, he pulls his shirt and he begins to fight. He must not be a giver of blows. He must be someone who is able to react to difficult situations calmly and gently. 
So if you see a Christian leader that beats up his wife, then that person is a Christian leader with a question mark on his, Christ, on his leadership ability. I confronted one. He said eh, that he only flogs his wife because the Bible says, um, spare the rod and spoil the child. And two, who were two, there was another senior Christian who was there. And he said, so your wife has become a child now. That you need the rod to be able to correct her. A Christian leader. And St. Paul is saying, this is an aberration. Such a person should not lead the church. The next thing is that I said that such a person should not be greedy. Should be a greedy person. Somebody who is fond of dishonest gain. Not someone who is a lover of money unnecessarily. Goes around claiming things that are not his own. Any, anything you see you claim out of greed. Anything you see you lay hands you claim out of greed. He said no. If such a spirit is what is in that person. That person is not supposed to be a Christian leader. Why? This honest gain will make him to do things that are unruly and the integrity of the church will be brought under question. He must be a patient person. Not somebody who is quarrelsome, but somebody who is peaceable. Because for the fact that there are more than one person there, you know, you would always find Little misunderstanding. What it takes is, for, is in the spirit of peace, in the spirit of calmness, in the spirit of gentleness, in the spirit of understanding, the leader calling all of us, sitting down to get it sorted out. But if such a person is someone who is not patient, things will spoil in his hands. And the, the church will not be better off with it. He must not be a brawler. Not quarrelsome. He must be someone who is willing to forgive an offense without bearing a grudge. That's what St. Paul is saying here. That a Christian leader must not be quarrelsome. He must be willing. He's somebody who must be willing to forgive an offense and not bear a grudge. He must not be a, co a covetous person. Someone who is moved by greed. Someone who is moved by filthy lucre. Somebody whose stomach is the driving force that he has. No, such a person is not supposed to be a Christian leader because he would definitely do things that would discredit the church. And he must be one that rules his house well. Your house is a mini church. If you cannot moderate your house well, it's obvious you may not be able to moderate the church well. The Christian leader's house, home life, like his personal life, must be exemplary. If he does not rule his own house well, how can he manage the church? That's exactly what St. Paul is saying here. He must not be a novice. He must not be a novice. He must not be a new convert. He must have been someone who has grown in faith. In fact, no matter how zealous a new convert is, the Bible is saying that he's not qualified to lead the church. Why? So that what befell Lucifer will not befall him. And what befell Lucifer? Lucifer was an archangel until pride was found in his heart. And as soon as pride was found in his heart, he was dethroned. So a Christian leader must be someone who has grown in faith. He must not be a new convert. And that new convert, no matter how zealous he is, should be allowed to grow in faith first before leadership and it must be someone with good report both from within the church and without he must not be an object of justified criticism 
justified criticism. He must not be an object of justified criticism so that the church will not be reproached and disgraced. He must not be a double-tongued person. Meaning, he must not be a hypocritical person. He must be someone that is honest. He must be someone that is consistent. He must be someone that holds the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience, being able to preserve the truth as God has revealed it in his word. He must be someone who is able to preserve what has been given to us, what, are, what we have inherited as Christians, somebody who must be able to preserve it in a pure conscience. And when you look at all these that St. Paul had marshaled out, they are just simply the outcome of a good Christian life. They are just simply the outcome of a good Christian life. What that simply means is that if you have given your life to Christ, if the Holy Spirit has helped you thus far to be able to live unto his pleasing, it means that you are a leader in your stead. Is your leader in that place where you are? Either a family, you know, a home cell, home fellowship, youth fellowship, a, you know, in that your in that your business, from wherever it is, be able to represent Christ. Be able to represent Christ where you are. And when we do this, according to the scriptures, it says we purchase for ourselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith. Therefore, we must trust God to allow his spirit Manifest out of us a good Christian life. For only then would we be able to stand for him as Christian leaders of repute. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we praise your holy name because you are our God. Thank you for the revelation that you have given to us today. Father, help us to live in the light of the word that you have given to us today, so that on that day we will hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Be thou exalted for hearing our prayers. Grant us the grace, O Lord, to move in the strength of your word. This is our prayer, for we are prayed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, Subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.